Okay, I'm going to work out a problem that my MBA students, it's a homework problem I assigned my MBA students, and some of them have some questions on how to solve it. They're having difficulties with it. So I decided to go ahead and make a YouTube video of it. This problem comes from uh, a CEPI. It's, a, it's a, a learning system that I use that grades, uh, assigns homework and grades it automatically and also gives good feedback to the students. Uh, the students have to pay only $10 for it, so it's pretty good. Uh, the book I'm using in conjunction and the problems that Asepi wrote uh, are similar to the problems from this book, and this is the book that I'm teaching out of. So, um, anyway, so I, what I did is I took, to save a little bit of time, I took this problem and took all these numbers you see in the problem, and I put them in here. Uh, basically, they're selling umbrellas. They have a tax rate of 21%. Their cost of capital is 7%. Their current machine, the book values, has been depreciated down to $200,000. So that's the book value. If they would sell it right now, it would be $160,000. Um, the project's got another, the machine's got a life of five years, and it can be depreciated down $40,000 per year. That would take that $200,000. 40000 times five takes the $200,000 to a zero value. Um, using that machine, the selling price of their umbrellas is $20 a piece and the variable cost is $10 a piece. The option is to buy a new machine that costs $700,000. So of course it's market value. It doesn't tell you this in the problem, but this market value is 700,000 because that's how much it costs. It also has a life of five years. They didn't tell us the depreciation per year. We have to figure that out, but it's, it's going to depreciate down to 70,000 in a straight line basis uh, at year five. If you buy that machine, the quality is a little bit better. It's going to be $22 a unit as opposed to 20 and it's going to cost a little bit less. So we want to analyze this new project and do some calculations and see if it's worthwhile to buy the machine and get rid of the old machine. All right. So, uh, so we'll just do it one question at a time. And the first question it asks is, uh, it asks us to find uh, what the annual cash flow is in years to one five with a new machine. So we might as well just do both machines. So the way you do cash flow, so let's just go ahead and take these numbers, take these headings down here. First thing we want to calculate is the sales, all right? And so the sales for the current machine is going to be equal to eighty thousand. I'm going to go ahead and F for that. Because when I copy this across, I still want it to point to the 80,000. And I'm going to take that times how much each one of those umbrellas sell for. So per year, so per year you get 1.6 million with a current machine. With a new machine per year, you get 1.76 million per year. Okay? So let me put the formula in here. Oh, my Excel is just kind of having a, there we go. Excel was having kind of a weird thing going on. Equals formula text. Let's put the formula in here. All right. Oop, that didn't work. Escape. All right. Excel's acting a little bit funny today. All right. And then the next thing we want to do is the cost of goods sold. And uh, that's going to be equal to also 80,000. That's how many units you're going to sell. And F for that um, times the variable cost per unit. And that gives us the costs. And then uh, we, we do our depreciation. Have to subtract that out. The early depreciation. And, uh, well, for the first machine they gave it to us, it's this. For the current, it's this. For the, for the new machine, we have to calculate it. That's why this has this question mark here. It's going to be equal to uh, 700,000 minus 70,000. And you're going to divide it by the number of years of depreciating it. So per year, it would depreciate that much a year. Okay. Um, and then finally, we can calculate something called the earnings before interest taxes. And um, the earnings before interest and taxes are going to be equal to the sales minus the COGS, minus the depreciation. 
And uh, so, so that's that's what we have for each one of those machines. Um, and then we can calculate our taxes after we after we take out our costs and our depreciation. And our taxes are going to be equal to the tax rate. Go ahead and F for that, and that's going to be times seven hundred sixty thousand dollars. Oh, Control Z. I didn't want to. I didn't want to move the cell. I wanted to copy it. And then, um, and then now we have to add back depreciation because depreciation is just a, a book number. It doesn't affect cash, right? It's just a book number in order to calculate to lower your taxes. It's an expense that lets you lower your taxes. So we have to add that back in. So we're just going to go up here again just to add it back in. And then finally, we can get our our uh, annual operating cash flow, and that's going to be equal to um, it's equal to this minus this plus this. Oops. Try it again. Dark in my room equals this minus this plus this. I probably should turn on the lights so I can see my keyboard a little bit better. There we go. So there, there's, there's our um, operating cash flows, and they wanted this one. Okay, so they wanted for the new machine, the annual operating cash flow. So that would be the answer to part one. All right. So part two. Uh, let me just go ahead and put part two here to save some room. They want to find. Um, the, the cash flow from the salvage value from selling the old machine right now. Okay. Um, I guess I probably should have put this in a solution area. Let me move this down a little bit. And we'll say uh, solution. Kind of keep things nice and neat. And let me copy the solution over here. And uh, normally... This is a formula. I don't know if it's in that book, but this is a real common formula to calculate the after-tax cash flow. Uh, it's a good one to remember. And uh, so we can calculate the after-tax cash flow, and that's going to be equal to the market value. And remember, they're talking about the old machine or the current machine. So the market value is this. If they would sell it right now, it's this. And then you can subtract, just like the equation says, the market value minus the book value. Close the parentheses and then take that times the tax rate. And uh, that one is just as simple as that. Uh, not too much to, to calculate that. All right. Um, so that would be the answer to part two. Um, so uh, in part three, I guess I could put part three. Let me move this book aside. Move this up here. Well, you know, let me, let me do it this way. I'll put part three over here. Right over here to the right. So part three is uh, what is the NPV of selling the old machine and buying the new, new machine? Ignore the old machine otherwise. Uh, don't calculate any incremental cash flows. So um, so what we could do, we could go for a solution. We could go uh, year and keep old and replace. All right. And we start out with year 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And if we keep the old, we don't have any additional costs. But if we replace... Well, we'd sell our, we would sell our old machine, so we're going to get this cash flow. But then we have to purchase the new machine for 700000 So we'd have a negative cash flow there. And then these cash flows we already did. Um, this one's equal to uh, that, right? I'm going to go ahead and F for it. 
and this one's equal to that, and I'll go ahead and F4 that. Then we can copy those down because that's an annual cash flow. All right, so now it's just as easy as calculating the net present value, and we might as well do it for both of them. This one's equal to NPV, and the rate is uh, the 7%. I'm going to go ahead and F4 it, and then our values are are these values. And just, just for clarity, we're going to add back our initial investment, which is zero in this case. So uh, let me just go ahead and take that down to dollars that way. Uh, we don't, I think the book likes it that way. And we can just copy this equation across. And uh, so that would be, so, that, so the answer to that one would be uh, $3,700,000. Oh, and 11. And then finally for part four, um, they want to know, I'll just put it right here. They want to know what the NPV of replacement placing is. Um, what that is. And let me just go ahead and just move it down and we'll just, well, you know, let me do it this way. We'll copy this, put it here. Here, I'll just go equals this. And the answer is very simple. It's just going to be equal to that minus that. And uh, that's it for that problem. So in other words, um, you would want to replace it, right? Because um, you, it's a million, it was worth a million dollars to do it. So anyway, that's it for that problem. Hopefully that helped. If you like this video, my picture will come up. As, as always, if you have, if you see, you know, I'd like you to subscribe by clicking on the picture, like it, give me a thumbs up if you can encourage me to do more of them. Um, give me any comments. I appreciate any comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.